We're in a 2012 two-door. This Jeep is more of a utility Jeep. Doesn't have a lot of options, and we're running a 6.0 L96 Gen 4 truck engine. Most of you know that the L96 truck engine was a heavy-duty truck engine, and it was used by GM even after the other Gen 4 engines went out of production in 2014 and 15. They kept it around to haul the heavy-duty trucks around. So if you didn't get a diesel in your 25 or 3500 series truck, you probably got an L96 gas motor, and it's a great motor. They had a couple other variations of it, like the LC8, which were multi-fuel. When they did make the transition from the Gen 4 to the Gen 5, they hybrid it, meaning they fitted it with a Gen 5 throttle body, and then used Gen 5 electronics controller, and used a hybrid harness. When we use a late model L96, we revert it back to the Gen 4 electronics as it was intended. I want to talk about compatibility among operating systems. Now this vehicle has no problem. We built this vehicle. It has a 2017 or 18 L96 that is virtually identical to all the other L96s back to 2010. We did change the throttle body so we could use the Gen 4 electronics. We're running a 2010 and newer transmission, so basically that means that the operating systems are compatible. We flashed it with the GM operating system, TDS, technical delivery system. It runs great, fuel trims are good, transmission shifts fine. Now, I do have a Jeep or two in the shop that were built by customers where they weren't aware of the combination of engine and transmission, so they're mismatched. We have a six liter just like this. It's a 2009, 2007 to 2009, six liters were LY6s. They're essentially the same engine as the L96, but they didn't have flex fuel. The flex fuel injectors are much larger. GM fitted smaller injectors to the LY6s and the earlier L92s, which are the 6.2 version. In 2007 and 8, they ran a different ECM. In 2009, they ran the 455 ECM, and in 2010 and newer, they ran the 238. That's why I stress, try to get 2010 or newer. That 238 computer went from 2010 all the way up through end of line for the Gen 4 lineup. What we have now in the shop is a couple of builds that weren't matched right. We have an LY6 that has the small injectors, and you gotta remember, what it really comes down to is the transmission control module. The transmission control module in the 09 was not the same as the 10 and newer. While you can force a tune into it, it's not right. The seven and eight transmission control modules were also different. You don't wanna mix and match those. You don't wanna take a seven or eight transmission and put a later TCM in it. You can do it with mixed results. The 2009 was somewhat of a problem solver. If you got yourself into a bind, you bought a 10 engine, you got an eight transmission. Sometimes you can use a 2009 to fix the situation but it's just a lot better to stick with the proper operating system. Operating systems are like Windows, Windows 8, Windows 10. Programs are like your calibration, like Word or Excel. In some ways you can make calibrations talk, but it's very difficult to make operating systems talk if they're not compatible. So we have a six liter in the shop just like this. He's got the same transmission. It's about a 10 or 11 transmission, but he's got an 09 engine and he had a 455 computer. So the 455 2009 computer was not talking well with the 10 and up TCM. Tap shift didn't work right, just didn't shift right. So we got a couple of options and what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade his LY6 to L96 standard, then run a 238 computer which is matched to his transmission and we should be good. To make a short story long, when you purchase your engine and transmission, there's a couple of things you need to look out for. Always try to get them out of the same vehicle. If you can't get them out of the same vehicle, get them out of the same year. You're pretty safe if you get a 2010 engine and transmission. If you get a 7, 8 or 9 engine, make sure you get a 7, 8, or 9 transmission that matches that engine exactly year for year. Don't try to fudge it. The beauty of the 2010 and up that I keep preaching about is that you can get a 2010 engine and a 2015 transmission. You can get, you can even get a 17 6L80 transmission and make it work with your 2010 engine. You do have to do a full flash with GM software because the operating system is different, but you can change that operating system and the hardware will accept it. So the Gen 5 transmissions will work with the Gen 4 engines. That is a 6L80. I get a lot of questions on the 8L90, and no, I'm not aware of anybody running an 8L90 behind a Gen 4 engine as of yet. I know there are some guys working on it, including Mitch, but I haven't seen one yet. So if you get a 2010 engine, you can pretty much get any transmission from 2010 all the way up to today if it's a 6L80 and you have a Gen 4 engine. If you get a 7 engine, get a 7 transmission. 8, 8 transmission. Same thing with 9. Different controllers, different operating systems. We have a similar situation with the Gen 5s. If you have a 14, 15, the early operating system, keep them together. If you have an early 8-speed transmission and you're having issues with it, GM has several updates for those transmissions. Most 
of them are software, but there are some hardware updates for those transmissions. We find that 16s are not too difficult to support, but 17 and up seem to be the best. So just like the Gen 4s in 7, 8, and 9, 14, 15, and 16 were a little bit iffy, but if you get an engine and transmission from the same year vehicle, you should be okay. Just don't mix and match. And a lot of times it's not my customer's fault. I've had guys buy engines and transmissions from Wrecking Yard that were allegedly mated together and pulled out of the vehicle. Come to find later on that the Wrecking Yard switched the transmission out thinking it was the same one. And a lot of times these Wrecking Yards don't use interchange manuals and don't know the difference between the electronics. They just look at the hardware and see that it bolts up. Recently we did an L83 build with a six speed for a customer. He sourced his own parts and he had purchased a 2018 engine and allegedly a 2018 6L80 but it turned out to be a 2013. When we got the vehicle running it wouldn't shift because the operating systems were not compatible. We were able to go in there with GM software and update the transmission control module to an 18 and it worked out fine. So do your diligence if you're going to source an engine and transmission. Make sure you buy it from a trusted source. I know that some wrecking yards charge more than others, but there's usually a reason for that. One, the warranty costs money. If that wrecking yard has to back that engine and transmission up for a year, then they need to get paid for that. You try to get the lowest price engine and transmission. You buy it from a private party. You buy it from a friend who said that he got it from somebody. Just be careful. I've seen a lot of guys get burned. I've seen engines that look like they're new but they were in floods. So just be careful. Buy it from a trusted source because a trusted source, while they charge more, you're going to be able to prove the origin of that powertrain and that could be important for emissions. We'll see you soon with a couple of LT builds.